Welcome back to Nukemac. Last time, Augustine had his fifth nightmare since arriving in the city, this one leaving him traumatized for a second night in a row. Meanwhile, Excavo also had a very curious dream wherein she confronted her own mute reflection in a mirror, who seemed to be trapping her in a strange black void and beckoning her to ask it a question. Excavo tried a series of questions and got no response until she asked, can I come in the mirror? Her reflection shook its head no, and Excava was released from the dream. The gang discussed strategy with John Tenniel, the gangrel who arrived in the city almost two years ago fleeing from the fungal monster and trying to find something called Palladian before the monster could. Darby claimed as a war trophy a magical necklace of unknown purpose that he took from the monster, then agreed to join John Tenniel in staking the monster out at the last location it had been seen, the Abbott family abattoir, bringing along the bat signal constructed by the Tremere Revenants in order to alert the others in the event of the monster's reappearance. The next night, Augustine was sent on a quest by an eccentric pirate-themed realtor named Patty Buckmaster to clean blood and dismembered animals out of several houses in the neighborhood called Shed Town before Augustine could be granted ownership of a gun store. Augustine agreed to the task and took interest in investigating these houses for possible masquerade breaches. Augustine and Archibald then paid a visit to everyone's favorite residentially challenged alley dweller, Onion Jack. Uh whom I finally have a picture of. If oh, you no. take a look... I just love look... the, the actual picture of the onion that um, Darby has. I'd use that. If you take a look in, no! in Roll20... <laughs> I see it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Uh, I, I love it. I love it. Well, it just makes a, a, an even richer portrait of of someone that Darby hates. <laughs> he look he looks so jolly. Yeah, he's such a best friend in the whole world. Yeah, Darby has already killed a beloved bear. I mean, like, you know, he doesn't really care. Uh, God, I hate that guy. Well. <laughs> well, in Onion sentence? In Onion Alley, Darby's least favorite place, the prince and the thaumaturge asked Onion Jack to help them dig up information about Palladian, a mysterious key to thwarting the fungal monster's plot to kill all vampires. At the same time, Excava was investigating on her own at a public library, where a helpful librarian named Donna led her into a restricted section of the building's basement and into an ambush. Excava was overpowered and staked through the heart, and her fate remains unknown. You know, this is the second time in a week that Excavo has been staked and captured. The campaign began like six days ago in in game I just, time. I just love it. I, you know, <laughs> I like I like vampires that don't get staked. <laughs> it's exciting. harsh. I have to hack my way out of this one. Hey, uh, Graham warned us from the beginning that this was going to be a high-stakes game. Oh, God damn it! Ooh. I'm staring Ooh. right at your little little image. <laughs> no, that was good. So, uh, Archibald, um, I heard like that you have... Long. I heard that you have new entries in the campaign journal to share with us. Oh, yes, we've forgotten to read several of them, so it was very fun to try and, like, whip up, like... I mean, one of these nights was, like, six sessions, but I've tried to not make these, like, terribly long. It's such legit content. Never apologize for it. Lay it on us. April 25th. I finally found a worthy chess opponent. F, the one who used a cursed game magic on Deliquad. Mucked up his mixings. I'll play them at Club Wonderland in a week's time, and I'd best practice. Because it's a rated game. April 26th. <laughs> Dear Dyer, it, these are fun because I only write about my character's stuff and oh, yeah. hours, everyone else. Well, obviously. It really checks out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to look down my dreams and stuff. <laughs> April 26th. Dear Diary, 
My beloved Onion Jack, dearest of my friends, has been associating with mimes. I must do something about this. Could the Silent Ones be connected to the mysterious happenings of New Kamak? I must investigate further. Oh, also we decided to tell Jade what truly happened to Delacroix. Honesty is the best policy, after all. Oh, She's yeah. gone, though. Like, super gone. April 27th. It's my cat's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost back to April, and pretty soon these sessions are going to be, like, looped a year round. April 27th. Upon this eve, Barry Bruha has related to us the finding of one fungified porcine. It is with this information in tow that we accompanied him to the Abbott family abattoir. There we encountered the fungal beast itself. Note to self. No. Well, a diary is kind of just one long note to self. Bring a ladder the next time we engage. This thing can fly quite high and can hold an entire derby whilst doing so. The creature escaped our, ga our grasp, but we got its necklace. I, for one, know that if my jewelry was taken from me, I'd be back to get it, so it's only a matter of time before our rematch. It was then that our resident DJ tipped us off about a disturbance in a cave, in our exploration, I found Jasper, the long-lost Onion Brother. He is a kind spirit, true of his blood. I must have them both over for night brunch soon. I night wonder if Jasper is aware of Jack's problem with the mimes. The dreaded silent ones. Unfortunately, our cave dweller was not the mushroom man, but a man bat instead. And quite a good writer at that. John Tenniel has tracked our prey across the better part of the country and is joining us in our endeavors to stop it. He's also given us an important clue to the goals of our opponents. We must find something called Palladian. Excavo has gone to the library to investigate. Guess it proves me right that a good old-fashioned book is better than any newfangled internet. The end. Huh. Huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Love it. Okay, so um, Augustine uh, Augustine mentioned <laughs> wanting to uh, maybe investigate the houses where there's blood and dismembered animals and maybe use Onion Jack in that quest, and we didn't resolve that, so I'm going to say we go now back to Onion Jack's alley with Augustine <laughs> and Archibald. <clears throat> My good man, it occurs to me that in the interim, until you don your new sh housing situation within Darby Manor in bunk beds with Darby himself, that you might be in need of some employ and may have some interim shelter. We have such an opportunity for you. Uh, would you as kindly assist us in... Cleaning up some minor knickknacks at a couple residential properties of a colleague we are aware of. And in exchange, you might take shelter in those refuges. You may even bring your things with you from out under the bridge and take shelter in those homes until a time. Why, why, Mr. Augustine, with a roof over my head, I, I feel like the king of England. I'll do any Charlie work you have for me. I'm not above an honest day's work. Now, uh, <laughs> please do accompany us, Onion Jack. Augustine, I, can I speak to you for one second? And I kind of get into very me. close and whisper. May I speak freely? Now, <laughs> just, just to make this clear, Augustine, you called him my good man. He, I <laughs> beg to differ. He is my good man. Augustine. Comrade, <laughs> comrade, <laughs> might I remind you? Your, may I remind oh you God. your philosophy? Our good oh. man. Also, Is this yeah. two like Shakespeare okay. plays fighting each other? Augustine, <laughs> you make a good point. I, but there's one thing in this world I won't share with anyone else. <laughs> also, he's not under a bridge. We're clearly in an alley in the alley. There's, there's a there's <laughs> an overpass. Oh, there is an onion alley. Okay, just right to on. make 
everyone right. <laughs> <laughs> Onion Alley overpass. I, I do greatly appreciate you making your feelings known in a, in a, in a quite intelligent and concise manner. This is a good way for teamwork and friendship to blossom with open communication, and we uh, we should be seen as role models to the young male community about how to express uh, feelings in a healthy form of masculinity. Invariably, and Augustine goes to, like, pat him on the back, and, but kind of awkward, fakes out, and, like, checks hand motions for what a hand pat looks like, and kind of awkwardly, like, thumps him with a light fist comfortingly just a quick dunk of yes i get accidentally back. knocked forward but then onion jack catches me and then i like fall back and kind of swoon a little bit and then i look at augustin and i just mouth thank you <laughs> it's a full dip <laughs> he just like starts Ooh. and then i say off to the houses <laughs> So do the three of you go to the first address given to Augustine by Patty Buckmaster? I, That's I a rookie so. mistake. We go to the third. What? Oh, <laughs> let me consult my notes here. This is going to change everything. Uh-oh. All right. Moves the first one to the back of the stack. <laughs> <laughs> So you drive south to the <laughs> third address uh, on the list, and you notice a sign welcoming you to the Shed Town neighborhood. Uh, you remember this as being the territory of the Gangrel River Erickson, whom you have not seen, but you have heard about. Uh, it's, a, it's a rundown, dimly lit, called a bad neighborhood, which feels like a classist thing to say. Uh, Sl slum is slum less judgmental that's probably more judgmental no that's that's more judgmental it's a Long it's income. a good neighborhood for feeding uh and it's dimly that somehow lit that feels worse uh <laughs> I, i'm being rude it's a good neighborhood for victimizing people in the dark <laughs> if you know what i mean oh my god taking away opportunities yeah. um but it is uh it's dimly lit there's a higher number of people wandering the streets and the alleys at night and if you wanted to hunt now it would only take you like a couple minutes rather than a full hour so you could just kind of like dip off and get that taken care of okay cool uh i whip out my key and kind of saunter up uh as i'm approaching i am still a little off put something about uh the captain guy definitely like he i don't know if he had great drugs or if he's just shady as heck but something seemed off so as i'm approaching the house uh i am like trying to look around does anything aside from it being a a, a less than savory neighborhood <laughs> come to my attention what kind of architectural style are we working with here is it victorian is it palladian oh is god it is it colonial there's no palladian <laughs> architecture no uh there's a combination of old really rundown houses and new looking kind of identical houses projects are they like those um those gentrification houses I was just gonna say, was this urban renewal? Is what they're calling it now. This neighborhood has not yet been gentrified. Okay, but is there is there anything else that stands out like strange to me? Is there a shattered window, a door that was kicked open, anything out of the ordinary? Like, do I even need my key? Is there oh, just like in this? Can you roll a perception check. In this particular building, uh, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. It just looks like an empty house. Uh, you do a quick circle around the house, like specifically looking for anything weird, and nothing jumps out of you. Even looking in the windows, uh, you just see just empty rooms. It's been cleared out. There isn't any furniture in it. All right. Um, I, I, upon confirming that there's nothing immediately out of the ordinary all right mr jack our good man are you ready to begin your first days of good work and i like showmanly try and open the door and display the insides as though i knew what was in there and like alas it would appear that your first day of work will be easy 
let us further inspect to ensure that that is an accurate assessment. And I, yeah, I scan the house. Just kind of like poke in every door, see what this grisly business is. Okay, you, you walk into the house and you're kind of just surveying it, going through all the rooms, uh, taking a look, and Onion Jack is following right behind you. Um, as you walk around the house, everything looks normal. It's just an empty house that's been left vacant for some time. Uh, you hear the sound of your footsteps reverberate in that weird way that you only hear in completely empty houses without, uh, with just like bare floors and nothing on the walls. Uh, so it, it feels weird, but... Uh, only in the sense that, like, it's a residential house with, like, not a thing in it. Um, After the first room or so, assuming nothing happens, something about the fact that they told me there was grisly shit that took place that we'd be cleaning and not immediately seeing any of it. Mr. Jack! I do appear to have forgotten my good companion bear cub in the vehicle. Would you kindly do me a favor and scout forward and observe the rooms while I go and procure our little fuzzy colleague? Why, why yes, Mr. Augustine. I'll, I'll go around and give, my, give myself a tour. Much obliged, my good man. You are already every bit the wonderment that Mr. Archibald told me you were. And I go and procure the bear cub. Okay. Um, are, are either of you slipping out to feed, or are you just nabbing the, the bear cub? I'm just nabbing the bear cub, mostly because I need bait to go forward in case someone else gets ambushed. Ah, uh-huh. okay. <clears throat> you return back into the house, and... You don't know about me, though you see a light on in the kitchen and Onion Jack is standing at uh, an open door in the kitchen looking down a set of stairs. And he looks back at you and he says, uh, Mr. Augustine, there, there's something awful wrong down there in that basement. By what could you possibly mean awful wrong? What is, is there a carpet in a bathroom? Far, far worse than that, Mr. Augustine. Been there. And he kind of gestures for you to look. Uh, is there any way for me to see what he's talking about just by, like, poking my head in the door? Yeah, you can just look down the, the basement steps. Okay. He's flicked on a light, and there's a light on in the basement. And you look down, and you see what's clearly blood, a lot of blood, on the floor of the basement. I feel I, like I already would have, like, seen this and headed down, too. Good sir, you have already dealt with a good manner of less than savory uh, vis- visibilities for the moment. Would you kindly uh, take a union break and hold my fuzzy companion? And I hand the bear cub off to Onion Jack because I know he's a gentle soul. And I join Archibald in the basement. Onion Jack and the bear cub are now playing happily in another room together. Uh, You walk down into the basement and there you find a pentagram drawn on the floor in blood with various parts of a dismembered rabbit placed at each of its five points. It looks like a rabbit had its head cut off and then the rest of its body divided into, like quartered, and you see a head and four paws and just hunks of viscera at each of the five corners of this pentagram. And it looks like the whole thing was drawn in presumably the rabbit's own blood. Well, Augustine, I've seen this before. The metal teens have been here. Is that who this is? I thought somebody was trying to grow a garden inside. Clearly you need more sunlight than this. Well, Augustine, I've seen this before. The metal teens have been here. <laughs> it's like uh, the the pentagram is such a, uh, I want to say generic, it's such a commonly used occult symbol that it's hard to narrow that down to any specific kind so, of thing. Yeah. Um, it's Augustine, a run-of-the-mill blood pentagram. Yeah, it's just a blood pentagram. <laughs> People do it all yeah, the time. Yeah, that like says yeah. to me, like, 
Like, does this seem like anything that thaumaturgists have been showing you, or is this some it would kids be, mucking around? Because this seems it, like this has it's teenager a cult written for me. It's all over it. It would be human blood if they were doing any kind of ritual magic of any power. Augustine, I'm going to say that with your uh, level of occult and awareness, it's it's not even going to require a a role. You can tell that this isn't mere graffiti. You could tell that a ritual was conducted here. Um, it's it's kind of like you you feel it in the air, and you could feel it stronger as you got closer to this pentagram. It's kind of like uh, when you're uh, closing down like a like a club or a theater at night and the speakers are still on and turned up but nothing's coming through them. When you walk past the speaker, you can kind of hear that it's on even though there isn't any sound coming from it. There's like a frequency is there, that's... Is there a technical name to that, Andy? <laughs> uh, not... I'm sh there might be what that really is is just literally like the speakers still have electricity coming through them they're outputting of you might have high wattage output for those speakers but there's no signal so they're literally just putting out um not an electrical hum it's imperceptible to the ear but you can tell it's there yeah that's um, what i was i was gonna get at it's it's <laughs> like you're hearing a sound that's just outside of the frequency that you can hear and you can tell that some sort of magical effect uh, is emanating from this area, and it, it does feel stronger the closer you get to it. Bully! I do it as soon as I'm perceiving this. I immediately inspect the rest of the basement for any closets and immediately rip them open to make sure there are no blood midgets around. Uh, still having flashbacks to... The torment that was the removal of my hand and eye. Uh, you, I, I, I assume I do not find any, correct? Yeah, you thoroughly explore the rest of the basement. And give me an intelligence plus investigation check. That'll be hey, six, six and, dice and for how you. Would, uh, intelligence. Uh, would it be five because of my trauma? You're right. It would only be five because you were traumatized I, I, by your nightmare. Sorry, my computer's uh, lagging pretty hard today. Not sure what's up, but... Three successes for you. Woo! It's all coming up, Augustine. You, you don't find anything else unusual. It seems like whoever did this came in with just the necessary supplies, took everything, uh, tools or other ritual components uh, out when they left, um, you notice the detail of the uh, the rabbit looks unusual to you. At the same time, it looks gaunt and skinny, like it was uh, like starved, and it also looks more muscular than you've ever seen a rabbit before. It suggests to you the 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 bulky rabbit suggest to you the first thing that you think of is this is what animals tend to look like if they've been ghouled for a long time um but it is unusual to see one that is also like skin and bones it's it looks very sinewy it's it's hard to describe but it it kind of looks like someone uh ghouled or at least gave steroids to a rabbit or picked just a naturally very bulky animal for some reason. And then, and then like, drained it. Uh, no, 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 it did not drain it. It looked like it had plenty of blood in it, but it looked like it had been starved. It looked like it died of, it could have easily died of starvation just as much as died from being dismembered. Okay. So, so the first thing that comes to mind for me would be the MKT where we found the ghoul pool, which I mean, would be an open source for rodents and rodents who feed on other rodents that have died. Uh, you have seen ghouled rodents there before. Uh, do, 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 do also, have, do, oh, go ahead. I also kind of like check in my mind. Do we know if gangrels can are known for thaumaturgy or magic or anything like that? 
Like, I know Bruja can't at all. Thaumaturgy, specifically, uh, Tremere have a near monopoly on Thaumaturgy, but there are other clans that have their own schools of magic. Um, you, you would know that when it comes to, like, what vampire did this magical thing there there are a handful of other well-known options other than this is a tremere doing thaumaturgy go I ahead also kind of like check in my mind do we know if gangrels can it, the stereotype thaumaturgy of gangrel, or uh, magic does or not anything include like that any like i know bruja can't of, at of magic. all gangrel are known for kind of keeping to themselves living outside uh Working with animals, communicating with animals, turning into animals, uh, but it's it's there's nothing in like the common knowledge of the clans that suggests that uh, a gangrel would be using magic at all. That would be very Augustine. unusual. Augustine, mm. it strikes me as odd that a gangrel like we're looking for would be treating an animal like that, right? Which suggests to me Occam's razor. It must not have been a gangrel. This must have been something else. The origins of which we have yet to uncover. Have we ruled uh, out teenager? <laughs> By God, I would hope so. Uh, do we have... Uh, uh, does a quick inspection of the house leading up to this point indicate that there are any cleaning supplies, like a bucket, garbage bags, gloves, sponges... Uh, things we didn't bring did the the pirate uh landlord by any chance leave any of these supplies in the house so for the you sake didn't of bring any cleaning supplies to clean a house they didn't have any at the underpass okay <laughs> well Out hey, of hey, hey, hey onion <laughs> jack is very tidy and keeps a nice alley uh onion jack uh like has a uh, he sets down a, a rucksack and starts pulling cleaning supplies out of it. There's like a he has like a squeegee and a sham wow. Is he and out a full broom. <laughs> That's one of the reasons <laughs> I and a Swiffer. Like are both very neat. It it is looks there, like it... stuff that he uses to like clean off people's windshields to try to get money. But he is there is there, like a bag of holding. <laughs> is, there, is there like running water and all the remaining supplies he would need to take care of this in the house? Indeed. Okay. Um, so... I'm going to use my phone to take a picture of this real quick. Absolutely. While you're doing that, uh, Augustine goes up the stairs and. Uh, Augustine observes... noticed one more thing with his Ooh. investigation check. Um, uh -oh. there's, there's practically nothing in the basement to speak of uh, other than like this, this pentagram, this dismembered animal. But you did notice little bits in the, the center of the pentagram, uh, little bits of ashes that looks like someone burned something, which is what ashes almost, usually indicate. The only ashes I could think of would be the old prince, um, which would be <laughs> wild. <laughs> Someone walks by, sees a container, opens it up like, oh, ashes, just what I needed for my satanic ritual. And just like picks some up. Um, I go up the stairs after concluding my observations and find Onion Jack suppo uh, supposedly playing with Bear Cub. Why have you had the I think I named him Paddington. Yeah. A at any rate. Um, my good man, I do sincerely apologize for intruding upon such a joyous moment. We have concluded that there is nothing to be feared in the basement, uh, and it would uh, it appears that you have adequate cleaning supplies uh, to handle this. I would like to go forward. There are but two more houses that I would like to do an observation with Archibald in the interest of just giving you an accurate assessment of the amount of work we would like you to do. Would you care to remain here and attend to... Uh, the first shift, as it were, of your new f means of employ. Uh, 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 Augustine, did we determine that it was safe? This is... Exactly. And there, there are three more houses. Total of four. Okay. Uh, th uh, sincerest apologies. My memory lapses occasionally. Three additional houses. I guess last question would be, do I see like a phone anywhere in the house? Like a hard, uh, like a landline? 
Uh, no. You see the one in your pants, and that's it. Does... Yeah. Archibald, do you? Do you... <laughs> He's what not year making is this? a euphemism. Do you? Do you have <laughs> your cell phone on you, Archibald? Yeah, I just took a photo of the thing with it, like okay. five seconds yeah. ago. Oh, your Jack doesn't have like like a track phone or something, does he? No, he's on uh, Boost Mobile. Onion Jack does have a cell phone, yes. There My you good go. man, uh, would you would you kindly <laughs> remain and begin your first shift of employ? I should anything occur, we both have our phones on us. Uh, we could give you our phone numbers, and we can be here in a moment's notice. My good man, does that uh, appeal to you at any metric? Yeah, I'll, I'll get right to work. You are too good for this earth. Augustine, Archibald, Augustine. please give him your number. Uh, well, he has it. <laughs> but Augustine, it's just a little bit of blood. It'll take about five, ten minutes to clean up. I think I'm just going to help out. We'll be done. And the, we'll but these other houses together. are in the neighborhood. We could inspect them together. And I kind of like... We could all three do it together. I kind of grab him by the arm. Ah. Uh, if you insist, my good man, but you are wasting our good friend Onion Jack's time. He could be making his livelihood at this moment, whereas we're doing a leisure stroll through other three houses where we could do managerial duties and ensure the duration of this project that he is endeavoring into. I'm currently already mopping, and I'm like, we're doing it right now. He is getting his livelihood. <laughs> I mean, we are. Our livelihood. And Onion Jack uh, finishes cleaning the basement. And then we go. In the time it took <laughs> to say all that. <laughs> and then, and then we, we go. It. It's just I mean, how many of us pentagram. have had to clean up the occasional pentagram? You know. So do you Guys, hop... can you imagine if there were five grams? <laughs> you get so much done. <laughs> we, uh... Once we, once we finish cleaning, apparently we do it together. The power of teamwork. I take a photo of the completed job just to prove to Pirate Boy uh, that we did oh. it. And With our, our powers way. combined, we have before and after photos. <laughs> <laughs> and do you rinse and repeat with the other three houses? Yeah. Do we find anything... Uh, I. It sounds like we're just going to kind of shotgun through them. Is there anything different at any of the three houses, or is it eerily similar? Yes. In the next house, it's a squirrel, not a rabbit. In the one following that, it's an opossum. And in the fourth one, it's a raccoon. Other than that, everything seems pretty much identical. Um, you know what I, I think the best character arc in this whole thing is how much better we've uh, gotten at cell phones. <laughs> Um, I do take after photos of all of these, um, and af when we realize that it's and the I same take thing in both of them, them. Archibald, please, for my Instagram, send me those before photos. Um, this is like do... major, like masquerade stuff. We'll market us NSFW. It, it'll be fine. We won't get censored. Or report. We'll be fine. Please send them to me. The, the Camarilla um, are very liberal with their use of NSFW tags. Uh, real quick. Shoot. Um, well, uh, one thing. Uh, you That sort of feeling that you get, that almost imperceptible sound that gets a little bit louder when you approach this, uh, this ritual location, uh, you happen to notice that that doesn't go away when the pentagram is cleaned up. It still feels like whatever effect it had is, is was not... It's was on not, the space. Yeah, it wasn't uh, canceled by cleaning up. So, so I have the four addresses. I, I know you're on the first of two things, but I have the four addresses, and if I plug them all into Google Maps, does it make a particular shape? Because it sounds to me like a fractal ward. Um... That's quite a conclusion to jump to. Uh, give me an intelligence check. Uh, intelligence plus investigation. Damn, Five dice right. for you. That's like a galaxy brain move. Damn. Uh, difficulty so six. Uh, difficulty okay. of four. Or maybe so not specifically I, the points, but so also have tracing the streets. Five dice at difficulty four. Technically six, but trauma minus one. 
Oh, it's like we learned the other day when the lady Elizabeth was telling us about how you could do one easy ritual, but if you expand the shape. Oh. I have three. We did put a hit I have three successes. In. We blues close our way into that one. <laughs> Maybe. We'll, we'll just have to see. But three successes, square. no failures. Well, no, no botches. Guys, can we talk about how the MKT is almost like definitely one of those? It would definitely. I can't be, like, talk a about anything right now. Depot. Uh, uh, no, I mean like the... the the points in the MKT. It's like in Full Metal Alchemist when the whole like world is a transmutation circle. <laughs> yeah. Woof. <laughs> Not our so inner weave will and ultimately be the protagonist that saves the day. set up to do a ritual that encompasses all of the town. This is my fan. Th I'll I'll keep this for the fan theory podcast. All right. Uh, uh, I definitely text we go all of these images and all this information to uh, Leslie. I have three successes on the uh, on the intelligence and investigation. Does that yield any additional information? This is the, the pattern that you get. Is it okay. one, two, three, four? There I, I'm are going four... to go ahead and just... With three successes, you can... If your mind is already in the direction of, like, patterns, pentagrams, you... 23. Yeah. And you can imagine... <laughs> We're, there's going to be a know. fifth one. I, I'm going to tell that Archibald that we need to go to that fifth invisible point. We you, absolutely you can imagine, have to go to that yeah. fifth um, and as, uh, Archibald, there is no time to waste. This is not a question. This is, I understand you are the prince, and I would like you to demand of me that we go to this location. There is something of magnanimous importance that we absolutely must investigate. I absolutely need to send this to Leslie. Uh, if we were to receive any assistance in this matter, I do believe... Some information uh, that was afforded to me earlier uh, that might speak of great doom is upon us. Please instruct us all to go to this location. And then I point to it on the map. You're not a slave. <laughs> <laughs> I just like look at him dumbfounded. I'm like, you did a smart thing. And you figured it out before me. That thaumaturgy paying off. I, te I text the group text immediately and tell them to meet us on this street. Uh, if I any, all available units. I text all of the pictures to Leslie and, a f and give uh, Leslie a call. Are we doing this like as we're running there because this is urgent? <laughs> we're, we're in the car, I presume. Because if he complete, I mean, it's like a street over from where we were. I figure we were just like running over the block <laughs> to get it, right? But what if we have to make a quick getaway? We have a bear cub. I feel we're worried about, like, stopping this thing, too. Because if he completes it, then presumably it's going to be bad. Okay, so we're running. And I've got one hand with a bear cub and one hand with a cell phone. I assume I've already texted the pictures and general details, like location, to Leslie. But I absolutely call. Just I have my group text of all the vampires say, like, get to shed town danger 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 and in one hand i'm carrying onion jack and the other hand i'm carrying the car <laughs> no i'm <laughs> no i'm not well you i am carrying onion jack though for sure you do not get a response from excavo uh whether or not darby leaves his post at the abbott family abattoir and joins you is uh is up to you but uh you nonetheless arrive at that location before anyone else and do i get a do i get an answer from leslie on the other side of the phone oh yes uh you call him up and he says uh uh hail augustine how may i help you hail remember our brief conversation about but a, 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 a fractal wards and whatnot. I believe you had that you. conversation with Elizabeth, but yeah, sure. You basically, never mind. Fractal wards, someone has done it or they're trying, and I assume it's nefarious. I have the information's in your inbox. I've taken pictures. There are definitely rituals. Check the map. Check the map. 
You Meanwhile, hear I'm trying to I'm trying to text and uh, while running and carrying air, Onion Jag, and I'm just like, uh, uh, damn T nine. T nine. And and you you've hung up on ST. <laughs> uh, you've hung up on Leslie. Is that right? No, I haven't hung up. I just screamed. Check the map. You you hear him saying to someone uh, in the rooms, "I I don't know. Dear Augustine seems to have lost his mind." Um. I, oh, now he. I does. I don't I don't know what you're asking, boy. No time to explain. It's most of a fractal ward. We're headed to the final location. Something nefarious is afoot that serves to bring imminent doom to all of us. Send I help. Explain. <laughs> I grab his phone and say. This is the prince. Come to Shedtown. I command you. What is in Shedtown? <laughs> Imminent break of the What, uh, well, give me an address and I'll, I'll be right there. This is most unusual, but you did catch me at a good time. So I, I suppose I, I can, in fact, join you just this once. Can I also just uh, impose my will upon Onion Jack and say that he also, not understanding any of what's going on, also just started yelling, The Fractal Thing! <laughs> <laughs> the ring, you gotta stop the ritual! <laughs> he's like over your shoulder like, The Ritual! He's Onion Jack is thrilled about all this. He, he thinks that you're on like a scavenger hunt or something. I haven't had this much fun since the prom. He's getting piggyback rides and everything. <laughs> so you arrive at what seems to be the house that's the the fifth house. And uh, it does not seem abandoned. It seems uninhabited. There's no cars parked in front of it. But uh, there... Are, there's like lawn furniture kind of overturned and there's trash and you look in the windows and there is uh, some furniture, but you don't see any signs of anyone being in the house. Uh, is the lawn overgrown? Uh, it is. The house looks awesome. abandoned-ish, but not ready for sale. With my phone put away and my bear cub in one hand, with my fresh hand, uh, I if I observe like nettles or anything... I scoop up a handful of nettles, a common weed found in overgrown urban areas. Very sharp, spiky. They're like cacti, and they're lightly poisonous, but they are rapid growing. Uh, I scoop up any of those if I find them and kick open the door to inspect the house. You kick no, open I the door. To do that. Uh, Archibald nettles? kicks open the door. Sorry. Uh, Our trespassing. You investigate the house, and it looks like a kind of a squatter house, drugged in kind of thing. You don't see anyone in it. You look around, and you see that there's a basement, and you turn the lights on, and you see a very familiar sight at the bottom of the stairs. You see yet another uh, pentagram in blood, and this time it's a cat that, just like all the others, Looks like kind of a beefy cat, but also one that appears to have been starved. Uh, all of the animals have those same characteristics. And also, just like in all the other places, you see little bits of ash on the floor uh, near the center of the pentagram. So wait, um, this, this, this uh, is the fifth of these, so completing the pattern. Would you say it's Squatter House 5? God damn it. I love it. All right. Bye, guys. I had fun. Good night, everybody. This show's oh. over. <clears throat> Archibald. <laughs> I love it. There's. Wait I've a minute. Wait a, a minute. Wait a minute. I've made a terrible mistake. They've led us this entire way. We, there was no possible way we were going to overtake them and their pacing. The only remaining place we can go is to the middle of the pentagram. And I fear what we might encounter. Is the middle a thing too? I don't know magic. Leslie walks into the house. Uh, 
Leslie Lane, Tremere Regent, uh, hears the commotion and uh, follows it down the basement stairs and walks in and looks at the pentagram and just doesn't say anything and he just starts studying it. Archibald, while reinforcements have arrived, I fear that we may only have moments to explore the outcome of what is about to take place. I feel that it is necessary that we do one further investigation in the center of the pentagram where I presume some terrible fate is about to occur for Shed Town. Would you please accompany me on this potentially last investigation? Yes, I will. Onion Jack, do me a favor and get as far away from Shed Town as possible. I can't explain everything. In fact, I can't explain anything, but you have to trust me, my <laughs> beloved friend. Oh, I don't understand what Your game wife. you're playing, Mr. Mr. Archibald, but it sure is fun. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do that next. It's and kind of like tag. I'll come find you later. I'll skedaddle. And if, if I might implore you one further favor on top of your already exquisite services, would you kindly look after my most treasured possession in this world? And I hand him the bear cub and additionally a satchel of tomatoes. Please ensure his Paddington's safety until such time as we can reunite with you and Paddington. He is everything to me. I would be truly lost of this world without him. Mr. Augustine, I'll protect this bear cub with my very life. I know you will, good Onion Jack. I could not be more grateful. Uh, and then I quickly scrabble a note on the wall, uh, kind of telling Leslie where we're heading. Oh, he's there to... with you. Okay. All right. Yeah, so he's he... in the room. Okay. He's in the I, room. I inform Leslie of our intentions to go ahead and scout out the center. I don't know if he's still got shit to investigate at this particular ritual site. He's collecting uh, stuff. He's picking up parts of like animal parts and putting them in uh, pockets of his robe. We may already be too late. We must absolutely get to the center of this ritual. I and also forget, are we armed at all or are we just going in? I don't think I brought anything. Uh, if, I rem if I remember correctly, I still am armed with my two handguns, two tontos, uh, some seedlings, not my deadly nightshade, and not my splinter servant. But now I have, uh, yeah, I'm a spaz. I just have shit hanging out of my pockets. This has I been established. Have brought something. Yeah. Uh, um, if, if, yeah. I presume you have your weapons on you. Cool. 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 Let's so go. We, let's rush. Let's get so to the center. We dash to the center of the pentagram. Uh, which is uh, a wide area of the whole neighborhood. And we're going to cut over to Excavo. Makes sense. And catch oh, up no. with her. What if she's the sacrifice right now for the last ritual? <clears throat> Excavo. The stake is pulled out of your back and your body springs into motion, but is restrained by heavy metal cuffs around your wrists and ankles and chains around your arms and legs, binding you to a chair. Uh, you can't see through a black hood that's been put over your head, but you can hear several people walking around you in a wide, echoey room with a low ceiling. It feels like you've been brought into a basement. And after a few moments, you hear one of these people, uh, a man, walk closer to you and ask, how did you find out that Palladian is in New Kamak? He sort of jostles your head a little bit and taps you. How did you find out that Palladian is in New Kamek. I know you can hear me. Excava is just pretending she's just limp. Okay. 
it's not talking. Do you think we should? And there's, there's sort of there's chatter in the background. Oh, it's not talking. They do say it. And another person walks up and says to you, Scavo, all right, there are lots of ways that we could do this. We would like for you to cooperate with us because we're going to get information one way or another from you. And it would be really great if, as a show of good faith, you would if just... you thought I knew... So... <clears throat> if, uh... If you thought I knew so much, why would you think it would make sense for me to come to the fucking library with no weapons and look for palladium? Why did you go to the library? It was just an idea that I had. Um, I honestly, I don't... I, you hear someone and, walking you know what, away I from have you. A, you know, I have a question for you. Before you go, who are you? I don't mean to be a cliche, but we're the ones asking the questions here. So, a again... An eye for an eye. Where did you hear the name Palladian? An eye for an eye. Who are you? Who are you with? Are you serving the writers? I'm obviously not with anybody. I'm here alone. You mentioned... Another person that you are here with. I uh, believe you call this person a, a prince. You, you said I'm that you were alone. the second. I'm here alone. You said that you were the second in command. Uh, command of you... someone or something, surely. Uh, what do you think that means? What other vampires what I said. know about Palladian? Does your prince know about Palladian? I'm here alone. Did you come here alone to kill him? To kill who? And you hear someone walking away and and they're just kind of chatting with each other like, I don't, I, I, I think it's messing with us. I don't think it's going to be cooperative. Did you come here to kill Palladian? So it's something to kill? They're, they're muttering to each other again. So one more time. How did you find out that Palladian is in New Kamak? Where did you hear that from? Did I say it was here? I mean, I don't even know what it is. I thought it may have been a place or, or a group. One of them, the one talking to you, steps back and starts quietly praying. Uh, he starts saying, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And then a second okay. man joins okay. in. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. And then a woman joins in, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. And then a fourth woman joins in, uh, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. And now all four of them are praying at you, and it's starting to make you feel very odd. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And they just keep doing this, and they're facing you, and they're surrounding you. And you, I can't see them. You, yeah, you, cannot, you can hear that they're facing you. And <laughs> you start feeling... Uh, Terrified, and not in an emotional sense. There's something supernatural happening to you. If you were able to, you would be fleeing the room uh, at all costs from this. And uh, this is this is starting to to traumatize you. It's starting to to break down your mind a little bit. Um, I've seen worse in my mind. I've seen worse. Uh, Please roll your, uh, give me a willpower roll. That's five, but you roll six because of your megalomania. Um, at least two success. You feel yourself resisting what they're trying to do. This, it's essentially what's happening to you is, is psychological torture. And it feels like, uh, you you barely resisted it this time, and if they kept it up, there's there's a chance that you will be damaged mentally or spiritually in some way. They 
they stop praying for a moment. And one of them asks you once again, how did you find out that Palladian was in New Kamek? I did not know Palladian was in New Kamek until you said something. Where did you hear the name Palladian? I don't know. Well, if you won't provide us with any information, we don't have much use for you. I you mean, understand? I mean, search my mind. I don't... I don't have anything else for you. That's why I was here at the library, unarmed. You... I meant no harm. So you might not give us any answers, but we know someone else who might. Uh, you said that you know the prince Ooh. and that you're his second in command. You're talking about a, a vampire prince, right? You don't know the prince? No, we're not acquainted. Interesting. I'd like to get his number. They toss your cell phone into your lap and they lift your hood halfway so you can you can see what's in your lap and your your hands are bound like this so you can you oh, can they're grab in your front cell of me. phone. I thought they were behind me. No, 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 they're they're in your lap. There's just a chain sort of around your chest, so this is about all you can do. What do um, you want me to do with this? Look up palladium on my cell phone? Was I wrong to come to a library? No, what we want you to do is to call your prince and tell him to come to 2300 West Jackson to pick you up. Father Palladian wants to meet him. And who is this Palladian? How do I know he's safe? You'll find out when and if your prince arrives. Yeah, you'll find out when and if your prince arrives. What if I call the police instead? What would you do? I suppose we'd stop you, but really, what would that accomplish for you? By the time the police arrived, there would be no evidence that you were ever here. Don't your kind tend to turn to dust when you're killed? You're not one of my kind. Is that correct? Oh, we're not vampires. We're people. Rude. This guy's not very friendly now. I see there's a group text. <laughs> you see that there are Augustine's uh, text screaming about fractals and pentagrams and shed town. I look at that and I kind of... I don't call. I, I, I text back. What was this uh, address you say? Two three zero zero West Jackson. <laughs> no wonder I feel weird. I'm in a church. Did you do? Did you tell I, Prince Archibald to come to yes, that place? I do text them. I go. I'll write it in. The dis I'll write it here in roll. What was the address that Augustine and I are heading to? Um. Uh, first thing, uh, Excavo, uh, go ahead and tell us verbally what, what you're texting. I say, second time this week I've been staked. 2300 West Jackson, now. And back to Archibald and Augustine, you arrive in the, the rough center of Shedtown. There are a few houses that could be in the center of the pyramid by your or, uh, pentagram uh, by your estimation. Um, and then you get this text message from Excavo. Uh, real quick, can I, it, were there any chance that we know whether or not Darby got the group text? Oh yeah, did Darby respond? Yeah, did it, was I notified as, as normal? Sorry, I haven't, haven't had a lot to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine Darby's just chilling. I don't really know what I'm up to at the beginning of this. No, I'm, I'm out with the, what's his name, right? I'm camped out. Yeah. Yeah. At you're the at abattoir. the Abbott family abattoir, but you get this text while chilling in the house of a dead man. I look at it and I, you know, I tell John, I got, Hey, I got a text from, uh, from the rest of them. Uh, it looks like they're getting into something. They, uh, they think there's some activity with, well, it's a pentagram or, I, I don't know, probably some necromancy happening. Isn't that what you're all about? 
I, I try not to be. Are you saying you got to go join them? Well, I, I really didn't want to leave you alone here. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they're all going to die if I don't, if I don't help them. I understand brother. Yeah. So I, I just give them the high sign and get in the, and the El Camino. And I think I unhitch the bat signal and just leave it with them. Yeah. And, and take the car and, and go to where they've told me to go. So Darby rolls up to the center of the pentagram. Yep. Okay, cool. That no, was just right in time type. So we we show up at the center of the pentagram. And you were describing, like, we see in the center, you said there were ashes, just like with the other five. Um, in the basement of oh, each of the bad. houses, there's a blood pentagram, a dismembered animal. And you also notice, like, the only other noticeable thing is, like, little bits of ashes in the pentagram. Okay, so we arrive at the center of the pentagram. The center of the the, the neighborhood the, the size. Pentagram. The map. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what do we find? Is it 2300 West Jackson? Oh, my God. <laughs> it is not. It is a uh, different I neighborhood. I really thought it would be. I, I'm it's honestly relieved, although I do love the Muncie Street names. Wait, also, isn't a ward oh, like a protected... for a church. A ward is like a, a protective Mary. spell of some kind, right? Thaumaturgical wards, uh, whatever kind of creature it's tuned to, that animal, uh, or that whatever it is, um, feels discomfort and then pain and then injury upon getting closer to or making contact with it. So if they're trying to ward vampires, if they're trying to kill all vampires, whatever they're building... It's going to be in the center of this this ward, if that's what they're trying to ward against. If it's Vam, if this person, because the gang girl probably isn't thinking that, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever they're doing, we need to get the bottom of it, for sure. So well, we up. Um, Augustine, give me an, a uh, perception plus investigation check. All right. <clears throat> That's a very good roll. That is that is five. extremely good roll. Uh, I have four in perception and with uh, specialization in pattern recognition. Does that mean s- or five? Five or is six 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 six. Five is plenty. Uh, yeah, that's you, a lot of successes. You spend some time going all around what feels like the the center of the pentagram, and you confirm that. There is nothing that seems particularly magical about the center. That kind of magical humming in the background that, uh, that you could perceive at all the small pentagrams, you can kind of hear it all around the neighborhood, but you don't feel anything different or special in the, the center of the pentagram. You spend a while very thoroughly looking around both using your normal senses and using the way you're attuned to magical stuff. And you feel like you uh, pretty conclusively determine that there is not anything special at the center of the pentagram. And then you get a text message from Excavo suggesting that she's been staked and an address to go to to rescue her. <clears throat> Darby is visibly it- pissed that there's nothing going like <laughs> but then you get a text <laughs> as, as usual i disregard darby and turn to leslie is with us correct uh leslie is still in you left leslie in the previous house while he was like scooping up animal parts and being like oh, i'm gonna take this to the lab and investigate all right so i think as prince i'm gonna say some princey things go for it augustine Check back with Leslie, figure out more about whatever it's going on here, because these pentagrams weren't for nothing. Maybe we are in time, and there isn't something in the middle yet, but there's something going on here, and you need to figure it out. Darby, sorry for the farce, false alarm. You can go back with John Tenniel. All right. Ready. But the text! Darby uh, salutes and gets right back in the car. And... The text didn't say anything about the prince, did it? It just said been staked but, right never mind i thought she like i said i had been staked <laughs> there's an address i've you been staked it to just now. the prince or you sent it to everybody 
the whole I sent it to everybody. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That Augustine, you should <laughs> stay here and figure that out. Darby, do you want to go back with John Tenniel, or do you want to come with me and unstake our friend? I feel like I ought to watch your back, sir. Just to, just to make sure nothing bad happens to you. Good man. That's what I call a hey. damn good sheriff. I'm like, wait. <laughs> and then I shake his hand. <laughs> Tarby's just like confused. Like, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, um, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll drive. Uh, whatever car you guys take. All over the place. Well, no, there's only one car here. Okay, so you guys hop in the car. With one bear cub less for me to carry, I sprint back to Leslie. Um, you still have the, uh, whichever of the, the sports cars you had. Um, Darby and Archibald are in the El Camino now. Okay. To clarify. Case yeah, I go back to Leslie. I don't know which scene you want to cut <clears throat> to. If we can do the, the Leslie one real quick. Uh, you, you catch Leslie walking out of the house uh, as, you, as you walk up to it. And he says, I'm going to take these things back to the Chantry and see if there's anything I could figure out. My good man, do you not hear the rolling thunder? I, I in Augustine speak, uh, express the sound of the surrounding perception. Like, clearly I could tell there was a magnification of some sort. Um, do you not feel the presence of un magnanimous energy? Were there any more information you could provide? Is there anything more we could do at this moment? Are we, do you have any, do, are we in imminent danger? Well, this is not a priority, but I do suggest you look up the definition of magnanimous. Also, I, I do not know what effect this ritual had on this location. Um, it's, whatever it is, it's subtle. Um... So I suggest that while we're here, um, I'm going to feed and then head back to the Chantry. Uh, what are you going to do? Without the aid of the Chantry, I shall presumably pursue my colleagues and assist them in their endeavors. It did seem that it was of great import, though I do greatly appreciate your diligent attention to this, and my debtedness is now magnified by the addition of genuine gratitude and not indenturedness. Thank you for attending to these matters. Please, I implore you, allow me knowledge as you uh, acquire it. <laughs> Sorry, this voice is really hard to <clears throat> maintain. We will keep you in the loop. Fondest gratitude, my friend. And I jump in the sports car and blast off uh, behind Archibald and Darby. Uh, going to the address that uh, Excavo indicated? Still holding my nettling weeds. Sure, you do have those. I'm such a damsel in distress. Okay, we are an hour and 20 minutes in. Do we want to cut it here, or do we want to have another maybe half hour long scene? <clears throat> half hour's fine. I can, go. Uh, I'm, I can comfortably go up till 10 o'clock, and then I have to cut out. Blake, we're ready. Okay. Dope. Let's do that. Cool. Bye, my there, is, there is so much happening. <laughs> This is like the last I episode of Attack on Titan. It. God damn it. I kept hearing um, oh. Wanda from uh, um, Avengers come out of me. <laughs> I, I just... <laughs> it was not French. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kept your resistance. I was it's just like, you, you were trying to get killed, aren't you? <laughs> God damn. I, my megalomania is taking over. Fair, fair. I'm like I've been through, I've had crazy, you know, dreams and visions and hallucinations and whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, this session there, um, not that, but there's definitely a lot going on. I think this might be my first one that I go to a second sheet of paper for this campaign. Fair. Uh, I have the advantage of like, I so I take the little. Uh, the little map 
I take character okay. specific notes, minor or less dots. concise. But mostly because I hear well, ev yeah. every session in great detail acoustically. Yeah, you listen to it like a couple of times and, and listen to me go ha! over and over. I do ha! filter out some ha! of those. Only when they're like overlapping, but yeah, there's a lot. There is so, there is so much going on. Holy shit. Uh, I am glad that I deposited Paddington with Onion Jack. Because I do worry, yeah. like, if they're praying, they're hyper-religious, they're not going to be the people that are doing the pentagrams, I assume. They're probably not friendly to us, but they might not be enemies, per se. But I did hear... Good luck convincing Excavo of that. I I it, I know it probably didn't mean to end up this way, but I feel like the like the princess and like these three princes are coming, and then they like who's the real prince? Like <laughs> I, <laughs> little damsley. Very Shreknet. <laughs> Which prince do you choose, guys. Mirror Mirror? Um. I have some definitive thoughts about these guys, but uh, I I'm not sure what I remember and what I'm figuring out. So I'm just not. I'm just gonna keep it all to myself. I don't I want to ruin heard... anything for anybody. Yeah. So I and Dar I don't take any notes. I, you know, Darby's got one intelligence, so he's not really supposed to be the memory guy anyway. So uh, I'm just letting you guys solve the mystery. I think. I heard it when they referred to uh, Excavo, and I heard he when they referred to Palladium. That's right. Those, that's those what are the, it's clued me in. I'm like, it's a, th like a thing in. to kill. You're right. And <laughs> backwards. backwards. There we go. Yes. I'm like, yeah. it's a thing to kill. That's news to me. I like, think that from like why? I, but I did genuinely think you were. I don't really have any info. From it a did lore strike. perspective, everybody should get at least a one dice roll to know what they're up against. Like this, this group of people is a recognizable group i feel to vampires or or ought to be like the way that they're behaving and and like what they did to her should should like trip some alarm bells worth a worth a roll from just like common knowledge is this the cashier from the <laughs> from the curio shop by god sons of bitches i knew they were too friendly oh, well, i mean they also staked me so are they i don't know well, they're probably who part of would the, do that people. and would they're... know how to do that. The Camarilla? Mm, no, From the... no, they don't feel very Camarilla-y to me. Well, but from but the but somebody who is clearly we're aware of the Camarilla. We're disgusted by vampires part. They but did they seem to know the word. They knew some stuff about vampires. So who? So the who Sabat? Yeah, they did. Know some they would, stuff. They would about... be the they're, Sabat. Well, yeah, they're Sabat... humans who hate vampires. Oh, yeah. humans who hate vampires. <laughs> they said there, they're humans, yeah. Is, yeah. is there another word? I know there's a name for it. I can't think of Slayer? it. Slayer? <laughs> well, yes, yeah, Slayer. I can't Hunter. think of it. Hunters. Hunters. Ding, 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 ding. That's it. Okay. Meta. Yeah, we got I was there like, with I the know Socratic we've come across method. this before. We've specifically talked about humans who are hunting vampires. We have. Welcome back and to New Kamak. When last we left yeah. off, Augustine was screaming incomprehensibly, and, and the rest of the gang was. was putting together what we knew. So the El Camino and the whichever the sports cars you uh, drove off in, uh, both arrive at that address and pull up and park together. St. Michael the Archangel Church is a large, imposing building with a large central spire and four smaller spires at the corners of the roof. It's ensconced in the center of a wide property ringed with a tall metal fence with subtle spikes lining the top. A road passes through an opening in this fence and winds its way through the grounds into a parking lot beside the church. The church would, would we have any kind of uneasiness with holy ground? I mean, I, I guess that's like a thing you have to have on your character sheet, right? To not. I will get to that. And it's uh, St. Michael the Archangel Church. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, okay. like, we just showed up at a church. Like, is this something that would, would unsettle us just by its very nature? Or 
Uh, yes. Okay. In a way that will be elaborated upon. Um, the, uh, the church itself is located deep enough in the property and surrounded by enough tall, thick trees that the light from the surrounding streets barely reaches it. There are lampposts spaced out along the road and the walking paths, but they're all turned off. And the only light illuminating the church comes from two flaming torches atop a pair of short poles at the base of the steps leading up to the church's entrance. Next to the torches are two men wearing identical light leather jackets and identical stern expressions. A few yards behind them, at the top of the stairs, there are two women wearing leather jackets and standing with their arms crossed on either side of the church's double doors. The doors are open and a fifth person is standing a few feet inside the entrance wearing a hooded clerical robe and mostly hidden by shadows. As you approach the church, you feel a growing sense that feels at first like fear and anxiety, but settles in as a deep, shameful guilt, as a child might feel after being caught misbehaving by a stern and disappointed parent. This feeling increases, tightening its grip around your heart the closer you get to the church. You feel like you can stand near the church with some difficulty, but approaching closer than a few yards from it would be too much for you to bear. Archibald, an image flashes into your mind, that of Daryl and Earl's terrified faces when you buried your fangs at them in the auto mechanic shop. You flash back to everyone who you've frightened, overpowered, and victimized since you became a vampire. Innocent people who were left worse off because you took advantage of them. Darby, you think about the person you drained in the alley and left for dead. You think about the many years of his life up until that point, everything that he accomplished, the friends and family that he's leaving behind, and the many years that he was looking forward to living before you robbed him of the rest of his life. Augustine, you arrived in town scarcely a week ago and have already killed at least two people, but uh, <laughs> your mind fixates on just your most recent murder victim. You picture his family, distraught, spending all day and night putting up missing persons flyers around the city. You picture his wife and children emotionally shattered by his disappearance and not knowing what happened to him. You think about the pain that his loved ones will go through for the rest of their lives and sense a profound shame uh, forcing its way into your heart. I 200% try and focus on the beautiful rose bushes that the corpse will in time be turned into and think of how lovely a sight and how carbon neutral they might be for other humans and just assuage my sense of humanity with well, I think the point justifying is, why I murked like the absolute effort. shit out of that person. I think the point is that whatever justification you've been using is working a lot less in this place than it usually does. And you so so that. are these I'm going to I'm going to take a stab no pun intended and say these yeah, are less of that. Sel these are self-hating vampires. Like there are people who have been turned into vampires but are trying to like no. make themselves holy again by like They're they're human beings. But they're they, but they might church. be vampires who want to be human again, who think their souls have been, like, stolen or some shit, and are trying to be as close to godly as they... That's the impression I'm getting. Your what? prediction has been registered. Thank you. I, as long as it's on the record. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. The hooded man standing inside the church's doorway speaks. Thank you for coming, Prince... And he scans over the three of you. His name is Archibald. Rogers Nelson. You are the prince that was spoken of by your second in command? Yes, I am prince. And, Dar and Darby like elbows him. He's like, hey, don't, don't tell them stuff they don't already know. 
the vampire formerly known as Prince. Rogers <laughs> Nelson. Prince Nelson. Wait, guys, in case you... That's Prince's Nelson. name, yeah. Prince Nelson. I am Father Francisco Palladian. And... Did you say... Are we, like, comfortable speaking in spite of all this, like, guiltness? Yeah. What is the practical effect? Like, we just feel bad? You, you feel, you feel bad, and uh, you feel like it would be extremely difficult to approach any closer than a few yards away from the base of the, of the stairs. Did we lose Darby? Did... No, I'm still here. Okay. Having camera issues. Did you say, are we, like, comfortable speaking in spite of all this, like, guiltness? No. As well, we've been looking for you. And these four are my students. Leonard, and he gestures, and you see one of the men at the base of the stairs drop a long rosary out of his out of the sleeve of his jacket, followed by a heavy metal dart attached to the end of it. He starts rapidly twirling the dart, wrapping it around his body, and then suddenly snaps it directly at your head, stopping just short of your face. He swiftly reels his rosary rope dart back in and tucks it in his sleeve. Darby reacts to this. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. Darby reacts to this in just unmasked awe. He's like, nice. That sick. What is that thing? And he points to his wizard hat. He's like, I got a weird weapon as well. Where where did you get that? The hooded man oh gestures. I, I said I was staked. I said I was staked. And we're looking at his wizard hat. I, mean, I look over game to... Like a game like that. What is that? Like, uh, like a rosary whip or something? I is lean to like Darby and I'm like... Do you have like a scorpion I am in danger. working with? <laughs> sheriffing it is very ah! cool but more sheriffing would be appreciated from you if any more weapons come flying it's shit's going down like what's i up? am in danger the hooded man then gestures in the direction of the other man and says ralph and the other man oh, does Jesus, a God price. Damn it. you're and doing a tnmt the, yeah he is oh. let me get through all of them i only I'm got sorry, what two is it? in Okay, okay, okay. The hooded man gestures to the other man and says, because he's introducing his students, Ralph. And that other man does a backflip and lands in a fighting stance with a pair of unusual looking tonfas in his fists, each designed to look like a Christian cross. He then gestures to one of the women at the top of the stairs and says, Chris, Chris. Michelle. And that woman pulls an object out from behind her back that looks like a short staff, uh, pulls it out of a holster on her back. She holds it out and allows two identical staffs to fall from it, attached to the center by short chains. She performs a brief kata, shadow boxing, a series of strike combinations with her three section staff, and then grabs one end and swings it over her head before slicing it through the air in your direction with surprising reach. She ends by holding the weapon stretched out in front of her, and in the torchlight, you see each of the three sections are labeled with gold lettering, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Finally, he gestures at the other woman at the head of the stairs and says, and Donna, and the, whom uh, Excava is acquainted with, and that woman unholsters a handgun and holds it up, pointing at the sky. And she looks at all of you and says, what's up? And then holsters Darby it again. Darby just openly waves back. He's like, hey, this is cool. You're doing like a little intro thing. That's great. <laughs> he says, Prince Nelson, what does it oh, mean? Oh, let me introduce <laughs> my team if I could. Oh, please. This I'm is, Darby. Misses out this on the subterfuge aspect. Just, hey, it's Darby. This is the sheriff. Sheriff Darby, just, that's right. Just, just, sh just sheriff. And this... Darby sheriff. Whatever. Is the tomato man. I hold out not tomatoes and shake them and gesture at them. <laughs> and then go back Nettles. to just holding them at my side. 
I, I suppose he's a <laughs> he's a cook of some sort. And Prince Nelson, God. what would you say your responsibilities are as prince? No, I'm in trouble. <laughs> We'll get to that. To work towards we'll to the that. betterment of our collective good. And then I reveal my weapon. What did Darby say about not telling everybody what The hammer and sickle. Nice. Nice. That's, that's princely. I like I, it. I like that. Yeah, that was is, it, is it your responsibility to protect other, other vampires under your command? Uh, Ixnay on the Empire V, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, obviously you know what's up, but like, you know, kind of keep it on the down low, my guy. That is correct, Father. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well. I'm going to die. <laughs> there is a. You are going to die. There is a sort of. There is a sort of. Irony, of course, to us meeting. My organization hunts and destroys vampires, and I suppose because of that, because you are charged with protecting your kind, you would normally, gladly, kill us all just out of principle. Wouldn't you agree? Mm. Well, I mean, we're not we're not trying to kill people for no reason, but it sounds like you got Excavo in there against your will. I am not very told friendly. that you have a hacker I of ours that we very much like back. We'd like yeah, our no, comrade in that. return. Yeah, clearly, clears that. However, <laughs> Father, I believe that we have a common enemy, and. Once our comrade is returned, we have no ill will towards you unless you have ill will towards us. Well, they, it sounds like they hunt us down as a profession. So that, that, ah, that sounds like a general ill, ill will. Darby. Yeah. Let me handle it. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Prince Nelson, we do indeed have a common enemy, and as a gesture of good faith, your second in command shall be returned to you. Uh, uh, Leonard? It is much appreciated. And you see the, you see Leonard hustle up the stairs, dart into the church, and then come out holding a, a staked, but otherwise unshackled excavo. And oh, he approaches they you. me again? Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Third time this week! Yeah. yeah I suppose it is. I am going to grow fangs in real life! You hate to say Gavo, are you hurt? <laughs> Other than the staking. Are you hurt? Still staked. Can't, uh, can't, can't respond. Fly. Can't do anything. Nope. Nope. So he approaches That's it. I feel and... I'm coming in. So, so Leonard approaches and gently lays her down on the pavement at the halfway point between your two parties, and then he returns to the steps. Darby looks at the prince for permission to go and get her. I nod. Right, yeah, so he, he walks out halfway, pulls the stake out, and then starts like dragging her slash escorting her if she wakes up <clears throat> back to our side. Quick thing about... Excavo. When Excavo is unstaked, a strange look comes over her face. She stands up and she seems different. Her posture and her body language seem different than before. And after a long moment of calmly looking around, she seems to just snap out of it and returns back to all of her usual mannerisms. But you do notice an odd serene change in uh, posture and behavior for a few seconds right after she's unstaked. Seems I normal feel, to me. Yeah, I feel like Augustine's totally oblivious to this change. Uh, well, I'm trying to think about, I don't know. It might be in Darby's nature to try to understand why 
she had that reaction. Like, what? What is is behind a sudden? Was it like like a like a like a sereneness? Like, what do you mean? Like a calm? Yeah, oddly calm. That might be elaborated on later. Uh, Father Palladian continues. Despite this goodwill gesture, you may still try to kill us, even though I am hunting your enemy and may be the only thing standing in the way of it coming for you. Now, Father, is why I would like to work with you in this endeavor. And Darby looks excited because... He kind of read about this in the book, but he doesn't remember the details <laughs> exactly, but is now like this guy is a character. And so Darby's fanboying a little bit because he's put together that this dude is referenced in Tenniel's document. Oh, we're, oh. we're quite aware, Father Palladian, that for reasons unknown oh. to us, you are apparently the only thing that can stop what we are trying to stop. So for now, I propose a truce. I hear what you are saying, but I also know that your kind is cunning and deceitful by nature. How do you know what you know about me? Well, firstly, if you think that our kind is cunning and deceitful, you should meet my comrades here. What? Dude, is this the guy from the book? Tell me. Oh, my God. No spoilers. Do you know how it ends, actually? Because I didn't get all the way through it. I got to say, like, as a character, did they tell you, like, how your plot is going to go? Because I guess that would be, you know, kind of disconcerting if you knew how it was all. Darby's just completely lost, um, lost the thread. I have but... been waiting for vampires to find me here in this place for years and I assumed that the ones that did find me were sent by the writers to kill me or the writers themselves may have finally arrived in the city you have found me and you know things about me I assume that you are working with them and that you are here to kill me and if that is not the case then how did you come upon knowledge of where I've been hiding? And Darby waves the prince off. He's like, I got this, boss. Look, we, you found our friend, all right? Like, look, we just came because we got called. We weren't looking necessarily for your hideout. You kidnapped her from the library. We Why just... did you let me go? Father, I have to admit something to you. It Like a confession? <laughs> I must confess something to you. I would like to keep this knowledge secret, but in interest of collaboration, we are quite new in town. In fact, we I'm know very town. little. We each were taken less than a week ago from disparate places, gathered here, and thrust by, we'll call it a vampiric organization to be stewards of the vampires in this town. And since that, we've had a very interesting week. We've found that there is a lot going on here. And I think we've progressed quite far for being six days into our little journey. But we only had your name. We don't know who you are, what we're facing. We're from in a where did over you, our heads. From where did you get my name? Did someone tell you to find me and kill me? No, we've only heard your name in reference to being the only thing that can stop our fungal foe. And who told you that? A guy named John, a writer. Writer, not writer. Writer. Oh, he invented you! <laughs> <laughs> Might I know this, John? He knows you pretty well. He doesn't at all, Darby. Darby's what you would call functionally illiterate. <laughs> what? That book or literally great. illiterate. Okay, you're you're protecting John's anonymity. I take it. Yes. 
so Father Palladian says, uh, as I said, I know that your kind is deceitful and conniving by your very nature. So I have to ask Rude. myself, why should I share any information? Why should I trust your intentions, not knowing your true allegiance? And then he turns to each of you, all four of you, as if asking you personally for a reason. And each of you is going to have an opportunity to make your case of why there should be cooperation. And after you make your argument, I'm going to tell you what dice pool you appear to be using. And then everyone's going to roll and you will need to all cumulatively score enough successes oh, to wow. convince Love him. Uh, and since, uh, fun fact, since you're interacting with mortals and because this is a social thing, you can spend a blood point to appear less vampiric and more human and get a slight reduction in the difficulty of your role. And you will need to score five successes cumulatively. So he turns to Prince, Prince Nelson. Oh, I'm going to need to think about that one, man. That's a hard question. <clears throat> Does anyone else want to jump up and go first? Darby runs right into it. Um, and he's just like... <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm like, I already first have... First hey, look, really, really appreciate the opportunity. Love your whole weapon uh, intro thing. Very very cool. Um, sick vibes you guys got. Uh, mad respect. Um, sec secondarily, I feel like... All you know, like, all we know about you is your name, and uh, we know we're supposed to protect you. Not not, not only are, are we meant to, you know, work together, but we're willing to put ourselves on the line to help you out. So if there is a way we could show good faith, I, I think we would do it. The, the guy that told us about you, he didn't send us to kill you. He only uh, told us we needed to save you or work with you to 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 beat these guys. I, you called them the Riders, I guess. Uh, we've only met one of them. I tore his legs off. Maybe that helps. Do you know the, the guy that's made of fungus? I tore his legs off. He flies around, and uh, he had this necklace. Oh, you see this? I got this off the guy. And Darby, like, you know, proudly displays his uh, trophy. Uh, anyway, like it seems like we're on the same side. We're new in town. You haven't hunted any of us yet, except for my friend. Okay, you staked her a bit. Not very cool, but like as long I think we could like blank slate with that and come to some kind of agreement. This was Darby. <laughs> 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 Who's ready to go next? Me. Excava. Yeah, me. Me. So we've all seen what we're up against. You know, you need something uh, powerful to fight this. Yeah, and the fact that we are standing right here right now means that you understand that we are powerful and that you need us to help you. Um, the fact that I need to be staked and tied up in order to barely cooperate just demonstrates that to you i mean if i had to tie you up and stake you you would not be standing just saying so in that regard um i feel like you already understand we don't even need to be discussing you know that you need us because uh, oh, what the group of humans who can pray i, I mean uh, again to this this is this is way way more complex now the other Another question one. is, do Dangerous. we need you? We could use more forces. And coming from a group that is already so powerful, that says how powerful this is. This swamp thing, wh whatever you call it. I, d I don't know if there is a specific name for it. So keep that in mind. Uh, who wants to go next? You got a preference, Archie? <clears throat> I can go. <clears throat> Good man. What I can tell you <laughs> is that your name came up in reference to the survival of our kin. And all I know 
is that you are the barrier between the thin leaf-like membrane between our kin and the enemy. Thus, we have a shared interest in your continued existence, and I empathize with the understanding that we are natural nemeses. However, deceitful, conniving, rude. <laughs> These are not words that typically grace my ears. Eccentric, mayhaps. However, equations do not Annoying. adhere to adjectives. Loud. We definite the math continues forward as it would ordinarily. We have mutual interests, and it would seem that in genuine sincerity, we would pre most likely prefer to see you alive and the continued perpetuity. Do If you know of this fungal being, which I would as presume you do not, we have faced its horror, and it rattled us as a group to our core. If you have not witnessed these horrors, I can inform you that you would rather not. It is in our mutual shared interest that we align temporarily and we may resume our quarrels at a later date. But in the meantime, I do at this <laughs> moment concur with our prince. A treaty, a truce if you will, is necessary, if not for us, if not for you, or my kin, but for my bear cub. <laughs> Father that leaves, Palladian. That leaves Prince Nelson. Father Palladian. If I may speak to you under my true name, Prince Archibald Alvins, I sense that we have very much in common, you and I, both stewards of our people, shepherds of our flock if you will the enemy that we've faced that threatens us also threatens you i'm not sure if in your experience in the town you knew an abbot family yes our kind the kindred feed on people we do not kill unless required we take what we need. We don't kill so... We're not so inhuman that we kill so inhumanely as the monster we face did. Twisting the minds of people. Driving them to do terrible, terrible things to the ones they love most. It's in our best interest for all of kindred kind and all humankind, I believe, that we work together. Okay. Darby, um, please give me a manipulation plus empathy roll. I, I, I will burn blood. Did I need to say that already or before I roll now? Nope, that's fine. So difficulty would be five. Two, two successes. Augustine, give me a charisma plus leadership roll and you're going to lose one die on it. Oh, those were not the roles I was trying to go for. Okay. Man, I suck on this. Is this standard difficulty? Yes. Uh, difficulty six. All right. So I get three die at difficulty six. Nop. Goose egg. Uh, Excavo, please give me a manipulation plus expression roll. And because you feel extremely shy about speaking to a group of strangers, uh, your difficulty is increased by two, so it's going to be eight. Oh boy. So it's just four die? Yep, you need to beat an eight. Yep. You got two successes. There are two eights! <laughs> All right, Archibald needs one. Oh shit. Archibald, please roll manipulation plus expression and do to your natural linguist merit. Just going to bring it up. I'm, think I'm glad you did. You can add three dice to your dice pull. Wow. So, so nine. One, two, three, four, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
What if it was none? That I'm wild. It's statistically possible, but quite unlikely. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> Each die. Yeah. There it is. Nine, <laughs> eight, seven, time. six, five, 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 two, nine. Prince of Kamak. Very, very Prince of persuaded Kamak. by your argument. Boom. Fine. <laughs> he knows. <clears throat> he knows we're powerful, or else he would have killed us. Extremely convincing. He pauses with... Uh, a furrowed brow that you can just barely see under his hood. And he looks like he's considering what you've said. And after a moment, Michelle approaches him and you overhear her say, Father, if we can indeed set these creatures against their own kind, it could spare us some trouble, assuming they're capable. Perhaps we could put their predatory natures to good use, like hunting dogs. And he replies, My... My child, you still take far too much at face value, but I feel that these four are already on the front line of this battle without knowing it, and we have a mutual enemy that must be defeated. Oh, we know it. They should know. And if they are... I and defeated him and de-legged him. <laughs> All right, that was worth... Yeah, it was good. And if they He's are like, in I, I league... I doubt you know as much about your hunting dogs as you do us. And if they are in league with the riders, then we'll not be revealing anything not already known to them. I work for an organization that monitors and destroys supernatural threats to humanity around the world. I operate with a small team of hunters, and while investigating a target in the Middle East three years ago, my students were killed, and I was driven into hiding here in New Kamak. Can I assume that you are not acquainted with the woman called Farika Bint Nidal Al Mahdi? And oh yes, that sounds familiar. That's, but F, the, that's F. That's, that's the chess us. player. That's F. That's the chess player. That's it. Uh, F. We are at two hours. Do we want to call it there or? Yeah, let's call it there. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's we have to. to stop. Okay, that brings us to the end of session 23. And I had a feeling we would get closer to the chess player, as I feel like that was a way they were trying to, like, suss out some supernatural stuff. I don't I'm, know. I, it I'm just... genuinely weighing whether or not I should let... Like, I'm curious if they're responsible for the pentagram... I like, think that's the game. or if they should yeah, know who's not. doing that, that's they're still like, super vibe or like, like a pentagram vibe. Yeah, there are still a few loose ends and things <clears throat> to tie together. I mean, they did know sure. mistake me, so they know stuff about us. Do they? Do you think it would be advantageous for us to inform them of the pentagram? I mean, we did manage to get in a car. I don't know if that was a storyteller like fast forward. Or if we're effectively like near oh, well, by. It, depending on how they react, and it seems like they're about to, you know, let their guard down a bit, though they're being assholes about it. Um, well, I mean, I think they're about to tell us a whole lot, and I think we're going to be pretty transparent with yeah, them, too. And we're going to share all the information we have. Exactly. Including that, hey, there was this weird pentagram situation. Mm -hmm. True story. Onion Jack stays out of it, though. They don't get anything about him. I mean, that's... Hell, that's why I gave him my bear cub, man. I, I just might, need I him might, to I keep might. my bear cub alive. I sense a time skip coming up soon, too. Callous slip of the tongue. <laughs> well, Wait, who what? wants to... Oh. Callous slip of the tongue, what did I miss? Just Darby might mention a certain alley under a certain overpass or a certain bridge in a certain area. Smells of a certain Could you cooking item. Okay, who wants to spend some experience points? Um, Archibald, you have 16 of those. That is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah. Time to spend some of those. Okay, but you can only do it one point per amount of time, right? Pretty much ever, because this, yeah. like, pretty much 
one time ever. At the Unless moment, you you can't increase anything that you have already increased. So that takes out okay. uh, melee, streetwise, yeah. leadership, and intimidation for you. So okay, so I can't do leadership. So I want to do. I feel like my thing usually I go for like intimidation or manipulation. So with all this investigation that you've been doing, I think there's a strong argument for your perception or your intelligence going up. I'll do intelligence. That's nice. It differentiates us on the stat sheet a little bit. Because I have pretty big like wits and intelligence and I mean like the physicality I'm pretty good on. But like that is filled by Darby, too. Yeah, Darby actually has a surprising amount of social stats. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a likable guy That's, to yeah. everyone but Augustine. Yeah, for whatever reason, other vampires rub him the wrong way. But he he's, he's a salt-of-the-earth fellow, good at making friends. So this leaves Archibald with two experience points. Do you want to hang on to those? Uh, yeah, I'll hang on to the two. Uh, Augustine, you have 15 points. Mm, I did a lot of running this session. I feel I like <laughs> sure. it would make sense that my cardio went up. I would spend eight points to bump up a point in stamina. Okay. You have mm -hmm. your third. You think so much of a beating. Stamina makes so much sense. I mean, I, I ran around with the bear cub for four fucking houses. Well, it has to be nothing if not consistent. Endurance <laughs> punishment as well. So, certainly. Um, this leaves you with seven points. Enough for a new path of thaumaturgy. Uh, if I take one that is. Okay, so abilities are current level times three. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. So, my awareness is at one. So, one times three would be three. And if. That leaves me with four. Next session, I could potentially still go back to picking up a new school of thaumaturgy. You already bumped your awareness. So you can't get another I one. I did? Yes, after Who session 16. Obviously not enough. Was not aware. <laughs> dumb storyteller hmm. writing down all my dumb experience expenditures. Yeah. Dumb Fuck jerk. that guy. Dumb. Don't even, don't dumb. even like him. Um, do, 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 do. Is, is glowing cubes. I don't know. <laughs> the cubes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do bear cubs. I can't. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, fun. Stealth. <laughs> I think. I do mm. zero times three is zero, right? Getting my first point of athletics yeah. to be free. A new no. ability is three points. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have fifteen. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> no, no, you have I'm, seven. Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and grab athletics just to tack on to the whole has been running around and kicking open doors and scrambling around houses. I think that would be adequate. Got Just it. to give me... Cool. That so leaves you with four. four. Good deal. Thank you. Can I hang on to one? Yep. Darby has nine points. I think I'm going to wait one more. I'm torn between two things that are a very similar utility, which is the third level of fortitude and a fourth dot in stamina, which both cost about the same amount. Um, stamina dots a little cheaper, but I feel like they have a very similar, similar practical effect. Um, oof. Be right back. I guess just to give folks. A uh, so yeah, the fourth dot of stamina would be 12 points and then third out of 42 would be 15, right? Or no, third out of 42, 10. That's an inclined discipline, so yeah, that would be ten points. Uh, either way, can't can't get either of those until next time, and I can choose between them at that time. Okay, uh, that brings us to Excava, who has ten points. I mean, I want to base something off of the uh, the 
persuasive speech I gave. Um, I mean, I'm already pretty uh, persuasive. Um... Yeah, you did face your mm-hmm. fear and, and over overcame your challenge of speaking to groups with two over eight successes. Maybe I get a point in performance. It would be my first one. Mm, it's more uh, expression is more appropriate there for like public speaking, just like talking to people. Yeah, I'll do a point of expression. All right. You know, I, yeah. Three points for your first dot of expression. I even I talked to them blindfolded. Is I knew there were multiple in that uh, room. Uh, is there anything else you would like to do with your remaining <laughs> seven points? Uh, no. I'll save those. There's it's one more seven. thing left. Um. So I mentioned that Excavo had a weird look that came over her face and that that might be elaborated on later. Right. <clears throat> so, Excavo. Oh gosh, we elaborate on that. What you went through was one of the most traumatizing experiences since your death, ranked up with the circumstances that brought you to New Kamak. Especially for a headstrong, self-assured person, it felt tremendously violating and offensive to be restrained and victimized, but Instead of falling apart and feeling scared and defeated, there is a part of you that's grown stronger. It feels kind of like an older sibling ready to step in and protect her kid sister from harm. But the person you're protecting is the side of you that people have been able to victimize. This other side of you has never been staked, has never been interrogated, Uh, never been threatened with torture, never attacked. It feels strong and confident and ready to fight. When you were unstaked, your posture was different. Your gait was different for a moment. Your voice may have been different. Aspects of your body and your mind were quite different from the Excavo that we've known up until now, but you didn't feel like anything had changed. You felt like the way that you were was the way that you had always been. You looked around and you saw that your captors had released you. You saw your allies ready to defend you and you felt safe. And that's when you faded back into the old familiar Excavo, only vaguely remembering the transformation that you had briefly undergone as if it were a half-remembered dream. You have gained the derangement multiple personalities. And after this session... I'm going to give you instructions for creating a second character sheet for an alternate protector personality with your existing Sick. attributes, abilities, disciplines, and virtues rearranged to prioritize self-preservation. Fuck. And the trigger for going into this is something that will be out of your control. But you can <laughs> you can write this character sheet, taking the dots that you currently have, shifting them around according to some constraints I'm going to send you. And uh, I literally have other character sheets in here. This is a blank one to fill in. Wow. I have I have four of them. This book came with four or five, oh. one of those. But yeah, so I have the paper. But, uh, but when, I will uh, want to yeah, put it on roll 20. When you do switch into the protector personality, uh, the way you act that out and characterize that is entirely up to you. Uh, but yeah, that will need a character sheet now. Does the protector personality get two extra dots for the additional derangement? For the, oh, as if it's Min like a maxing. Do they have to be the yeah, same? Yeah. Uh, I assume they have to be the same race, a Malkavian. Oh, clan. Uh, yes, uh, you. Hey, clan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to be a Malkavian. But I thought, if, if anything, this it. this makes you more. No, Malkavian. I was I was thinking D D. That's my bad. <laughs> well, it's like, oh, I they, could, they could. This personality could definitely uh, be like a black person. That would be like pretty problematic <laughs> to role play. Sure, but I mean, I was like, it. yeah, like <laughs> yeah. If that's your vision, you know, sure. No. Your other, no. like, you, race isn't a constraining Oops. factor here, I guess. That's like a weird place to explore, but this is a safe place. I mean, go for it. Good night, everybody.
Yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. No, that's a, yeah, that, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, good session, though. Looking forward to seeing this other Excavo that might come out. And uh, looking forward to the next session when Father Francisco Palladian will reveal who this person was that he was about to introduce all of you to. Uh -uh. It's time. Okay, see you guys. All right, Love you guys. Have a good night. Peace. Bye.